Hello everyone. It seems quite a long time since I did one of these. Um, a lot has gone on since then. But um, anyway, we are continuing with the pen for the time being. Um, because it seems appropriate, I feel, for autumn things. And um, I've received some hugely successful pictures from you this month using the pen for building. So let's see how we get on with painting berries and hips and haws and things like that. Um, I've chosen some rose hips to demonstrate this time. Um, and as my roses are still blooming, I decided that I would include a rose in my painting as well. Um, so there seem to be quite a lot of colours here, but there is a, quite a difference between a white rose and a little collection of, of rose hips. Um, so that gives you an idea of um, what you would need to do for one or the other, or both. Um, I decided to work to size and not actually create too large a picture this time, because if you have a lot of one thing, like a lot of berries or whatever, then it... Um, you know, can get a bit um, lacking in variety, shall I say. So um, beware of that and try and create variety in your painting. Um, I used um, a 0.3 um, water re resist pen and I didn't use smooth paper because sometimes if you're doing something reasonably delicate, and I was including the rose, um, it can look a little harsh to have such a, a heavy solid line which a, a smooth paper um, tends to sort of create. So I've used the cold press paper which gives me a slightly more broken line and um, but still allows me to get the, the actual appropriate shape that I, I need. I'll start with the rose and I'm using, I'm going to try to do it all with one brush which is a number eight. Um, sable blend. Lovely clean water for a nice white rose and for the rose I've mixed together some cobalt blue and um, some quinacridone magenta and remember that it is just a wash I've created the shape in the shapes that I need in my picture with uh, everything so it is just a matter of creating a nice wash popping in shadows and all the colors that you see um, which actually makes life a lot easier sometimes I'm softening the edges for the shadows in this little flower and trying to create the shadow tone by using sometimes a little bit more of one colour than, than the other in, in the work. I also see a little bit of yellow in there, so I'm going to pop that in, which will look quite nice beside the purpley shadow. And don't worry about going over the edges of your drawing. It's actually going to help to, to free it up a bit. This is not at all the way I would paint a rose if I hadn't drawn it first with pen. I would be much more careful about where I was popping my colors. But when you're just creating something with a little wash over the top, it's a different technique altogether. And it actually works quite well just allowing the color to, to bleed and to blend one into another, helping to free up the whole thing and create a nice, looser approach. So I've gone back to a more solid line, if you like, um, unlike the marks that we make when we're painting buildings because this is a more delicate and detailed subject. So 
amazing how many flowers actually are still blooming outside. I still have quite a lot of roses and the Japanese anemones in fact are looking better than they did earlier on when it was so hot. They obviously have benefited from having a little bit more rain and colder weather. Right, so I've tried to make this side a little bit darker than, than that side. Um, got another little bit of rose going on up here. So, and that I can see a little bit of pink in that little bud. So anything like that that you see, pop in because that helps to give variety to your picture. So look out for all the, the different little aspects and especially in autumn, when you actually see um, lots of bits and pieces, you know, little tiny sort of scruffy leaves and things like that. Actually in a drawing like this, it would look really good to, to actually pop those in. So do all you can to create nice, interesting picture to paint. Right, I think that's okay. A little bit more under here, I think. Good. Um, so now I'll start on the berries and do a few of those before I speed up. I've got a couple of reds out. I've got the Cad Free Red and just the Cad Free Red Deep, but also some alizarin. And because I've drawn it, I can start up at the top here. This little berry is looking very scruffy because it's going over. But what we must remember is that everyone will have a little bit of shine, a little bit of shadow. So you can, if you think you might forget for your shiny areas, you can use masking fluid, but I'm going to actually try to remember to leave my shine as white paper. and try to vary the tones in my, in my berries and put in any little blemishes that I might see as well. So a little bit of shadow, maybe going back to the purple color that I used for the, for the rose. So don't labor over a little painting like this because it isn't meant to be colored in like a coloring book. It's meant to have variation. It's meant to have just a little wash on the top to bring your drawing to life. I'll go back and put the little scribbly bits on later. Keep an eye all the time on your subject and, and look out for any variation. Whereas I've got a really, really, really dark berry here. So it's got quite a bit of purple in it. And then little bits of shine. Sometimes berries have a hard edged shine Sometimes they have um, a softer shine. Um, the sort of shine that you see on a grape is, is better, which is more of a bloom really, and better if it's actually lifted back off rather than, you know, hard edged by leaving a sharp white area of paper or in fact using masking fluid. But these have got quite hard edged little 
areas of shine. Right, I'll just speed up while I, I paint a few more berries because I've got leaves and stalks and things to deal with also. the berries in. Now I'll go I think to the little dried leaves and the little scruffy bits which are really looking quite dark and not worrying too much if my berry is still damp and this colour bleeds in. I've got um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue mixed together so that I get a little bit of variation there, sometimes a bit bluer, sometimes darker, um, but any dark color really would work pretty well, I think. Just let the brush do the work for you when you have these little spiky leaves. Bear down, then lift to get the marks that you need. They're, they're, I think the, the main, one of the main parts of painting um, berries, I think they, they add a lot of interest, they're lovely. And of course, if you've drawn them, you're not going to lose that original shape that you made in the first place. dotting those colours in, trying to vary them a little bit. These are all very quick, so don't, you know, take too much time over them. I think the more time you take over these things sometimes, when you've got a little wash just to apply, then I think you can get a little bit too hard and heavy. It's lovely to just leave it as a little wash. Pop in a bit of green in there as well, because some of those leaves are still quite lively. So while I'm doing that, I'll have a look at the little leaves that are on the, on the little rose bush as well. I don't mind going over the edges at all because it just helps to create a little bit more freedom. The last thing you want for a line and wash picture is for it to end up looking very stiff and boring. So you as I was saying, they are quite quick, so you may get quite a few done this this time. I hope so. Um, love seeing what you do, and really you've been working so well with the pen. Leaving white paper, always a good thing. Got some variation in there. A little bit of depth. Letting the paint float around and sort of make its own marks to an extent as well is always good. So this little pointy brush is working quite well. It's doing a good job of allowing me to get all the marks that I particularly want to get. Right, let's do something about the stalks, which in fact have got a, a ready tinge. So I'm using that ultramarine blue and raw umber colour. And I added a bit of the red from the berries as well. So I'll do the branches, I think, first. 
and any opportunity you've got to put little twigs and things like that between will always make your picture look more natural and like it would if it was outside. And of course with the pen you can put on any little tiny thorns which we tend to sometimes leave off when we're painting normally. Little touches of dark in those branches. And then nearer to the tips of the berries, it turns a little greener, the little stalks and leaves that sit underneath the, the berry. So a bit of variety going on there. And then I'll work on the leaves last. Always start when you're doing your drawing <clears throat> with the focal point so that you get that in exactly the place that you want it to be. The temptation sometimes if you're looking at a big array of something is to actually just start at the top and, and work down or the bottom and work up. But if you were to work first in your focal area you're going to get everything in the right place so put that in first and then work from it and stop when you find that you've reached a, a nice shape don't be tempted to draw first with the pencil because really it's not going to help at all. It's just going to make you end up with a stiffer, more overworked picture and less instinctive. I find people work much more loosely and freely using the pen than they sometimes do with the pencil, which doesn't sound as if it should be that way, but it actually really is, I think, because you just go for it and you don't worry too much about getting everything looking completely as you see in front of you. Just wing it a bit. Okay, so that's coming along. Now I need to work on some leaves, some of which are lovely and green some of which have turned yellow, which is going to help to give me variety again, which is a good thing. And so I've got the, the Windsor yellow and the Windsor blue for my greens, green leaves. Start over here and work down. Leave white paper, work in the direction that you see the markings on the, on the leaf and just indicate those leaves without filling it, filling them right in. Putting a bit of dark wherever you can to create a difference. And especially around a, a, a white rose, I would need maybe a little bit more colour, I'll have to think about that when I've finished and see whether that's exactly what I do need. Right. Normally I would turn my page around so that I've got a better angle to work at, but I can't really do that at the minute. But I'm trying to get some variety in these leaves. I always like to pop some blue into my leaves. Somehow it makes them look fresher.
keep an eye on what you've done and go back if you need to bring something up to a you know deeper color or whatever right They have a little bit of shine, some of these leaves, actually. So, could lift back some shine. That thing was clanking around. I'm going to bring a little bit of yellow into this one. And actually some of them do have blemishes so dotting a few little areas of a few little marks in is going to make them look nice and natural I made a blot there don't forget you've got your little eradicator brush if you make a nasty mark that you don't want keep it clean Right, I like that yellow one, I'm going to do some more. So, raw sienna. A little bit of cad free yellow as well on the top to brighten it. A few blemishes. And they look very natural. You can obviously take a lot more time than I've been able to, but at the same time, try not to overwork. Make sure you, you remember that it actually is a just a little wash. Okay. So... Just some leaves here to do. They are quite blue, some of those leaves. But if you work one side of your leaf then the other side is going to help you to get shape that you need and also one side if you paint one side then the other you're going to get variation because nearly always if you look at a leaf one side looks slightly different to the other and it stops them looking flat there's a leaf sitting behind here that's another thing make sure you've got um, some perspective in your work so that you've got um, some things sitting behind something else you know you don't have to do a lot of it but just some of it will actually really help to make it look natural the temptation is to leave spaces between everything and especially with leaves because they tend to sit on top of each other all the time so Try to pile them up a bit. And it's easier with a pen than it actually is otherwise. There we go, I think we're just about there. Where the stalks come away from behind a flower or something, it's always a good idea to put a little bit more depth. 
it brings the subject forward. Okay, that's that's all I need to do. But at this point, if you want to go back and put a little touch more color here and there, that's a good time to do it once the rest of the picture is dry. And as long as you leave some white on a white flower, it's still going to look white, although I've actually put quite a lot of color into it. There. Now I could go back in and maybe paint a few more leaves or indication of some more greenery going on behind, more twigs, things like that. Certainly around a flower if you if you are doing as I am and popping a flower in. Um so that's something if you've got a bit more experience and something that you might like to do. But I'll show you some more pictures that I actually have created, painting berries and leaves, to give you some more ideas. But that little bit like that has just helped to bring it together in the focal area there. and help to bring that side of the rose out, just quickly. So, paint to size if it helps. And just wash your colors on, okay? Berries are lovely things to paint. They're lovely and bright and cheerful. So, that's that one. Now I'm going to give you a few more ideas. Here's one I did earlier. Similarly. You may wish to, this is a good thing for beginners to maybe do, collect a lot of berries in and, and make a con a montage and, and fill your page. Make sure you do fill it, squeezing in little bits and pieces so that it all stays together and looks nice. Um, the demonstration in class this week was this one. Some crab apples. And so if you have crab apples, these are the colors that I used for those. And they're beautiful to paint because lovely and colorful and cheerful. And again, lots of variation in them and the leaves. Um, you may wish to put a background down first and paint on the top, draw on the top with your pen and paint, but also painting in extra bits at the end to loosen it up and give depth to your picture. This one was also painted on top of a, a light wash of colour using the colours that I actually use in those berries. Um, so that's another idea. So now I'm getting to the more sort of challenging subjects for those who've got more experience. And so maybe that's something that you could do. Collect some berries and leaves and things and paint them in a pot or a vase or something and put a background on. This one I've used spattering, so same rose hips, but I've used spattering and painted in a few little twigs afterwards with just paint. So that's another technique using the splattering, which suits, I think, autumn. Or if you want to be a little bit more wintry, you can use the cling film method, which I think you can probably just see 
in a light way behind to make it look cold and icy. Okay, or in fact you may come up with some even different ideas and I shall look forward to seeing what you do but if you're a beginner keep it simple and don't try to get too complicated to start with. Um, endeavor, endeavor to vary your colours though, that's, that's quite an important aspect um, and they're good subjects for beginners actually so you should do well this week and I'll look forward to seeing. Um, this is such a nice time of the year and there is a lot out there to inspire us and so I'll come again on the um, 1st of November with more ideas for autumn and winter. Um, for instance, perhaps leaves and seed heads and all sorts of things that I might find outside. Okay, so have a good week everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.